Hello, everyone, and Happy New Year 2024. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing very well here in Norway, and I'm so happy today to have a special guest from Montana, and uh, I met her at the Global Beauty Award. Is it not wonderful how the Global Beauty Award is connecting people? Welcome, welcome, Lisa. Thank you so much, Larissa. It's an honor to be interviewed by you. And I love as well that we got to meet at the Global Beauty Awards last April. She is the state director for Miss Montana USA and Miss Montana Teen USA and Pageants Northwest producer. Please put your hands together for Lisa Pierce. Awesome, awesome. And thank you again uh, that you wanted to come. This means a lot, a lot for me. And um, I would like you to present yourself generally. Yeah. Okay, well, um, my name is Lisa Pierce and I'm the current executive director for Limelight Enterprises. We produce the Miss Montana USA and Miss Montana Teen USA pageant. Mm -hmm. um, 2023 was my first year, so I am, I'm a new director and I love everything uh, about what I do. I also produce um, for Pageants Northwest. So for David Van Maren and Maureen Francisco, I'm their producer for Washington, Idaho, and Oregon. And um, I've been doing that for two years. And then this year I added Shana Mokler's states. I also produce for her with Nevada and Utah. Awesome, awesome. And I think you were the Miss Universe this year. I yes, see. that too. Yes, I started working on t on the ticketing crew at Miss Universe. So my first year was in New Orleans um, in 20, I guess it would have been 2023 and or 2022. And then, yes, I got to travel to El Salvador um, in November and work Miss Universe again, which was an incredible experience. Wonderful, wonderful. And um, I know you have an award that you you uh, give the name of your daughter to and yes. this is Morgan Isawa. So I would like to know how you all started this. And uh, yes, tell us. Well, um, so my daughter Morgan, she was Miss Montana Teen USA 2020. Yeah. And of course she, her title year was during COVID. It was a very strange year. And I think COVID affected a lot of us on so many levels, but particularly teenagers. I think there was so much isolation. Yeah. Um, she had a lot of change in her life after she gave up her crown mm -hmm. um, at like completely separate from pageantry. Yeah. And she developed an eating disorder. Um, talking to her now, we've discovered that it really was something that had kind of been brewing her whole life. Um, she grew up as a dancer. And, um, you know, I just think society places such pressure on women, especially, and, and girls and teen girls. Um, she just grew up comparing herself to other people in the dance world. And uh, just the kind of that little seed in her brain, I think, started brewing from a young age. And so we've been working through that. She's been mainly doing the work, but as her mom, we've been working on it together. And I've seen her journey through that eating disorder. I've watched her recovery and I've just seen how devastating that mindset is for not just young women, but little girls, women our age. I mean, women of truly all ages. And when Maureen Francisco said that they were open to new awards at the Global Beauty Awards, yeah. it just came to me that um, there are a lot of young women who believe that they're not beautiful the way they are. Mm -hmm. If they're five pounds too heavy or 50 pounds too heavy or too tall, too short, um, whatever they feel like makes them not enough, um, mm -hmm. we came up with the Morgan Pierce Everybody is Beautiful Award. And it's to honor someone in the pageant industry, it can be a competitor, it can be someone behind the scenes, but someone who truly just embodies loving themselves and their body just the way it is yes. and really promotes body positivity. 
this is wonderful, awesome, awesome. I'm originally from Africa, Cameroon. I've lived in Norway so many years and I'm Norwegian. Uh, but I know what you're talking about. We, I've grown up thinking being beautiful is to be thin. There mm -hmm. we are really round. It's not like just we Africa mama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from a Bantu tribe and we say that, that beautiful women has to be very round. So we grew up as young girls trying to get fat. And uh, men, if they present a lady who is very thin, so the in-laws, uh, they don't want this girl. And uh, so it's funny how the culture is really, when I moved to Norway, I was already 30 year old and I was like, okay, so this is the way it has to be here. So, so everyone is beautiful and um, I think this is really a topic of the time. And it's a topic that will probably help many people. I own an NGO, which is called Beautiful Inside Out, and it's to help also women, young adults to build up their self-image and restore their life. And when I read uh, the description of the Morgan piece, Awa, I was really moved. I have tears in my eyes and I realized how many people are still going through this and young adults who can be very affected, you know, and as parents, if your child experiences that, it's really devastating. So this is really something you did well and congratulations with that Awa. And um, yes, you said you organize a competition for Miss Montana, how is it going? You know, it's going great. Um, we, 2023's pageant was fantastic. I could not have asked for more um, for my very first experience as a director. Mm. I had just an extraordinary group of young women compete. Um, we had 25 between teen and miss with just six months of recruiting, which is a really great number for Montana. We're not, you know, your stereotypical pageant state. Um, girls here tend to be more involved in sports and maybe agriculture. Um, and so, we have to work a little bit harder to get our numbers in, in Montana. So I'm very proud of that. And I just feel proud of the relationships that I've been able to build um, with the young women who competed last year. I'm so excited to get started for this year. I'm hoping that we get the green light to start moving forward with our 2024 state pageants here really soon. I already have 15 girls registered and, um, yeah. And of course, now with the new changes, removing the age restriction, mm -hmm. it completely, I mean, opens everything up. So I, like I could compete um, if, I, <laughs> exactly. actually, yes, you if I wasn't actually a director. Um, so I love that, how that opens things up for women. Yeah. You know, the year before it was allowing mothers and, you know, you could be divorced, you could be married, you could even be pregnant and compete. Now yeah. removing that age restriction, mm. I think there are a lot of women um, of all ages over the age of 27 who maybe have a dream of, of being involved in pageantry, maybe being Miss USA, Miss Universe. And mm. it just really opens things up for them to accept a challenge that they've always wanted to try but maybe just weren't brave enough or life circumstances didn't allow them to mm -hmm. and I really look forward to seeing who else might decide to compete this year <laughs> awesome this is wonderful and I don't be, I don't believe that the reason why Miss Universe decided to open up with ages and all that is because of people like you people like me who who I highlight on problem and what is going to on with women and and pageantry in general. And uh, this is the result. I was amazed when I saw uh, Miss Universe Nepal. She was not that thin and she was so confident. And I was like, wow, this is wonderful. And uh, I can imagine how many women feel released. Like, well, I have hope I can still compete and uh, young ladies and it's awesome. I really, I'm glad you mentioned her, um, Miss Nepal. Yeah. I loved, and I was there, which was so powerful because every time she stepped on that stage, 
the roar that would go up in the room of the crowd cheering for her. It was unlike anything I've ever heard. And I'm just really hopeful that her participation last year is going to really just open things up for other women Mm -hmm. of all different body types to see that, yes, there is a place for me in pageantry. There is a place for me within this organization and really just empower them um, to go after their dreams. Exactly. Awesome. Awesome. The Global Beauty Award. Yes, you. we're going to meet again next. Is this year in April. Oh, my God. We are in the beginning of the year. Yeah, I know. It's not very far. <laughs> so it's awesome. And uh, how you prepare? How are you preparing for the Global Beauty Award? Gosh, you know, I really don't know if I am. Um, I I was nominated actually for best rookie director producer. So I am so honored by that. Um, and there, I think there are seven other just like incredible people in my category right now. Yeah. Um, and truly like you hear when someone's maybe like nominated for an Oscar or a Grammy or some other award, they always say it's an, it's an honor just to be nominated. But yeah. when you're in that position, you find out it really is true. Just to know that someone in your industry mm-hmm. saw something in you and how you do your job to, um, to warrant them wanting to nominate you for something like that. Exactly. And I have Carrie Damiano to thank for that. She reached out and, and asked if she could nominate me for the award and, Coming from someone like Carrie, I don't know how well you know her. She's incredible. She was Miss Idaho USA, I want to say in 1980. She's one of our sponsor coaches. She judges pageants all over the country. Um, She's so highly respected and regarded. And for her to nominate me for this award, nothing could be better, truly. Really, really. And that recognition means everything. And um, I was all, always crying yesterday, almost because of the nomination I've received. And then I was like, oh, mm-hmm. my God, I couldn't even imagine people have been observing me and they thanking me already for the job I'm doing. I'm really, really thankful for this. Got about seven nominations and was like, what? And uh, this is the second time I will be going there and... Um, Really, it's a great job and a tremendous job you guys are doing there. And with this Global Beauty Award, I think we should promote it more and uh, support. I am in Europe, Norway, and uh, I'm looking forward to travel that far to attend. I'm looking forward to it, too. Yeah, David and Maureen have really come up with something incredible Mm -hmm. with this. Um, And it is. it's, It's wonderful to see how it really brings pageantry and what pageantry is really about to to the forefront and um, really lets us showcase how we're contributing to the world in our own little ways. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. And I want to ask you before we, hold on, if there is something you want to say to all ladies from the beginning of this year, because we're still like, today is almost the beginning of January, and what is your keyword for this year to the ladies and women outside there? Oh gosh, my keyword for this year. Um, that's a good question. I will start with 2023. I feel like it was a tough year for a lot of people, but it it really was mm. for me. Um, I'm happy it's over. <laughs> I love fresh starts. Um, mm. So it's nice when it's a new year, but I think it's important to also look at every day as a fresh start. You can't just wait for, you know, oh, well, (laughs) this year's a wash. You get to July and it's been a a horrible year. And so you just kind of throw the rest of the year away and say, well, 2025 is going to be my year. Um, I think it's important to look at every day as a fresh start. My son's a golfer and our philosophy is every hole is a fresh start. So (laughs) even if you did really bad on the last hole, the next hole is a chance to do better. Oh, cool. um, but for my word, the one that's really just coming to me is believe. Um, I think it's so easy to like not believe in yourself mm-hmm. and sometimes to not believe um, in the good in the world and the good in people. And um, so I think if you can just 
believe, believe in God, higher power, the universe, whatever your, your thing is, um, believe in yourself, believe that there are good things out there waiting for you. Um, but you have to make them happen. You can't just sit back and wait for them to come to you. You have to believe, but then you have to follow through with, with action and connection and community and, um, and just being a good person to to everyone around you. Wow, that was powerful. Really oh, yeah. taking it with me now. And uh, it's very easy not to believe. And this is a really, really good word. And thank you so much for coming. And um, I know that we're going to have more videos. I'm looking forward to see you again at the Global Beauty Hour. Ah, I can't wait to give you a big hug. Yeah, me too. And take a lot of selfie and maybe have a broadcast there. That would be fun to yeah, do something. Fun. And we just do it like naturally and say, hi, how was it? And then we film it. It's going to be awesome. Thank you so much. And Happy New Year again to you and your family. Thank you, Larissa. Happy New Year to you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.